Hello everyone, thank you for joining me again today on day four now of my embellished ornament series and today we are going to make a box to put all our goodies in that we've been making so far. All right, shall we get started? <laughs> it's exciting isn't it? So I have here a piece of 12 by 12 peppers as and this comes from the whoops um subtles cardstock pack because unfortunately we don't do 12 by 12 in single colors anymore we actually do it as a whole pack so i've got some peppers as here you could use pool party or you could even use the whisper white which does come as 12 by 12 either would be fine i think it's really down to how you finish it off more than anything else all right but for this one i'm going to do 12 inches by 12 inches now scoring we're going to start off as i said with the base so we are going to score i've got to try and get around the tripod here at three eighths oh the dog's come to see me hello molly go on out you go you're going to get in the way go on good girl sorry about that um what was i yep three eighths and actually let's take those off because they're putting me off what one and five eighths ten and three eighths whoops and eleven and five eighths turn the cardstock round and excuse me, I have to get rid of the dog. She's now having a, a cleaning session. Molly, get out. Molly. Molly's the animal. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yes, I'm talking to you. <laughs> no, out. Go away. Molly. Oh, goodness, a give up. <laughs> she doesn't want to go away. She wants to stay here. So we'll let her stay here. Right, we've turned the card round. So... We've got our score line at the top of the bottom and we're going to score again at seven eighths. Ooh, I hate doing these ones that are really close to the edge like that. So seven eighths, two and one eighth. Whoops. And then we're going to do nine and seven eighths and then eleven and one eighth. All right. Because what we're actually going to be doing here is making the box with the sides that are slightly reinforced just to give them a little bit more solidness. Right, let's move my scoreboard out of the way. Now we need to fold and burnish all these score lines. The narrow ones, as always, are going to be a flipping nuisance. But just spend a little time teasing it round and it will go. just wish they'd go a bit easier <laughs> would make life so much simpler right that's it I'm gonna do this narrow one as well because I always think if you get the ones that you don't like out the way first then you don't really have anything to worry about because you know when you're making things and there's always something where you think oh I'm a bit bothered about that I'm a bit worried that's not gonna work the way I want it to well do those bits first Get them out of the way so you can get back to enjoying what you're doing. Whoops. Oh, now the dog's banging my chair. Oh dear. Right. Here we go. On to the nice, the nice big fold. So folding and burnishing. We're going to make the box and then we're going to make some nice dividers to go in it. Now I haven't quite decided on the lid yet. I'm not sure whether to do a white lid and decorate it or I was thinking maybe we could use a window sheet because that way it'd be you could put a clear window sheet on the top and it would make it I just think it might make it look a bit nicer because no one can then see all your hard work without even having to open the box you know what it's like when you go to the shops and you see these lovely Christmas things and they're all lovely packaged well the first thing that always catches your eye is what's inside the box and if you can't see it it's not so interesting is it hmm 
I might have to think about that. Right, now cutting. Let's get to cutting. Uh, what way round shall I do this? I think we'll go, yeah, we'll go this way. So you want to cut up your score line. Dirty scissors, look. Right, so cut up those score lines at the bottom there. So I'm doing it with the narrow fold is towards me. And I'm cutting in the score line. And just do a slight notch, as always. Remember when you're making boxes, always notch in those flaps because it makes it much easier to fold them in and gives you a much nicer finish. So we're going to cut those and we're also going to cut a notch on our little one here so that when that folds over again it's going to fold over nicely okay turn it round do it again on the other end and then cut the little one off and again on this side I did think maybe we could do some sort of fancy schmancy kind of box for this as well, but then I thought, oh, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a card, isn't it? It's not a gift box as such. Maybe we'll do a fancy one on another video. Mm, yeah, I'll think about that. I don't know yet. Right, with your endy flat bits, you want to cut, see where that score line is? Just cut in a slight notch on that score line. So we've got one there and one there. Turn it round and then just cut into that score line. Now if you're very fancy, you could also cut a notch at the same time. Although I think it's easy doing it that way. And you see this little flap here? Not the big one, because obviously we need the big one, but this little diddy one that's sticking off the end, just snip that off, because we don't need that one. So that's what you're ended. Ended? <laughs> that's what you end up with. <laughs> that's what you're ended with. That was good English, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, there. That's what we're going to go for. All right, so that's what you need to be making yours look like. All right, so I'm just going to snip round get rid of all my ends, do my notching, well that was the worst notch ever, hang on let's try that again, that's better, see some people can do it all in one go, I try as you just saw, but it never seems to work very well for me, I think it's because I need to take a little bit of time just to make sure I'm cutting the right thing really, because at this stage, if you cut the wrong thing, you've messed your whole box up. And you have to start all over again, don't you? And it's rather early and I haven't had much coffee yet, so I need to make sure <laughs> I'm not doing anything that's too taxing. That's why if ever you watch any of my videos, you'll see all the ones that are a little bit complicated are generally filmed later in the day when I'm more awake. Right, glue time with your multi-purpose glue. We're going to start off by folding the tab bits. We're making a box. Always use glue when you're making a box. Just keeps that nice and strong because, as I've said many a time, the fibres that are in the paper mesh with the fibre. Well, it's not actually fibre. It's... Um, yeah, I suppose it is a kind of fibre, isn't it? But it meshes with the acrylic that's in the glue and you end up with a really nice, strong bond, which also gives you a really nice, more importantly, strong box. There we go, that's that one. Now, I use my bone folder to get right into these corners. I'm hoping you're going to be able to see this with the light on it. But if you flatten it down with your bone folder, like that, and then using the end of your bone folder, just go right into that corner. Because what you're doing is you're pushing the glue 
into that corner so you actually get a really nice sealed corner and you don't end up with gaping corners popping out everywhere this gives you a much nicer finish so just push it into that corner oh got a little bit hanging off there let me snip that push it in and you get your corner nicely glued together let's do this one I do use quite a lot of glow as well. I know some people don't. Some people use double-sided tape. <laughs> I just like glue. I like to be able to move things around a little bit to make sure I get it exactly where I want it. I just find it easier. It's all down to personal preference, really, I think. Oops. There we go. Right, let's just... Do those corners again so smoothing the glue down pushing it into my corner there we go look at that perfection so if you don't you end up with this kind of thing going on can you see it's slightly open but by just spending a little time pushing that glue over you get that really nice tight finish right. see Ta da Right, now we're going to glue our flaps in. Now these are going to be going in that way. Okay, so I would suggest do your narrow ones first. Move those ones out. Fold them, whoop, fold it out a bit. Fold your big ones out of the way. And then just run some glue just along that edge. And then this way you're going to give yourself a nice neat finish on the edge of your box as well as actually making it a bit stronger there you go look that's much nicer isn't it rather than just a, a single piece of card i think it just looks nicer and again you can use your your bone folder just to flatten it all down nicely there you go look see really nice finish much better than just a, a rough edge of card so if you can, even if it's only a small amount, I mean, we've only got three eighths of an inch here, but I'm still doing it because it just gives that extra, Ooh, come on glue, just gives you that little bit more professionalism. Looks yummy. That's probably way too much glue. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Here we go. Oh, oh, that wasn't too bad. Look. Oh, I thought I was going to be covered in it as usual. I'm quite proud of that one. Never mind. Right. Stick it all down. Now, the box that we've made, as you may have gathered, is one and a quarter inches tall because we needed to make sure that there was enough room with the cards because where the cards are more than one layer, obviously it does make them a lot thicker. So you need to make sure you allow for the thickness of the layers as well as any embellishments that you've put on top as well. So just needed to make sure our box was deep enough. And I think we have achieved that quite nicely. There we are, that one and then the last one. And then what we're going to do next is we're gonna make some dividers to go inside the box. Ooh. We went all over my grid paper then. Not entirely where I meant it to go. Now the grid, whoop, the grid paper, <laughs> not the grid, <laughs> not the grid paper. The um, <laughs> what are they called? Uh, dividers. The dividers. <laughs> I'm gonna do in full party. <laughs> right, that's gonna go in there like that. So that will be where all our cards go. The small ones are going to be going there so we need a divider that's going to separate this side and this side okay so i am whoa, as usual i haven't got any out the drawer no minute oh, got some poor party Whew. whizzing around there right and i also want my trimmer because i need to cut this down to measure eight inches whoops caught the box there 
we need to measure eight inches there we go so only cutting a tiny bit off that edge there by what did i want it by eight and three quarters that's what i wanted it by well actually it's not eight and three quarters because the box itself is eight and three quarters so go just a tiny bit under eight and three quarters so i'm going to go under by um that's not eight and three quarters is it that's seven and three quarters let's go to eight and three quarters i'm going to go under by an, about an eighth i think no a sixteenth that's the word sixteenth right so let's trim that bit off now you could use your stamping trimmer for scoring Ooh, i'm just smashing up the room and using my scoreboard because i like my scoreboard right so <laughs> we've got over that one with your eight inches going across the top you need to do your first score line at uh let me think four and three eighths then we're going to go to five and five eight yeah we'll go to five and five eighths and then six and seven eighths all right all of these measurements as always will be on my blog so if you're not catching it as i'm saying it don't worry too much because you will get them now this needs to be folded kind of concertinery almost so we're going to start off with that middle fold i'm going to fold that as a mountain fold so that one goes upwards the two at the side are actually going to be done as valley folds so they go under like that and then the same on this one as well that one's going to go under all right so when we put that in our box it's going to sit in the box like that with our cards on this side all right but now we need to make a nice panel to go this side and what i'm going to do on this side i'm going to have the note cards at the top and then i'm going to have all my tags whoops if i can grab hold of them all all my tags are going to go at the bottom now you see there's that gap there oops just there that gap is going to have some of the cord in because we need the cord to go onto the tags i did think about putting the cord on first but i thought mm, i don't know because that might end up screwing the tags up or could end up looking a little bit messy you know sometimes where you have them on and if you're using ribbon it's not so bad i suppose but you still need to be a little bit cautious with it but i thought because i want to use the cord i want to have that section in the middle all right so this is where we need to section it out so how you do this part really depends on how you're going to lay your box out whether you are going to have it with a section in the middle for your cord or whether you're going to have it with ribbon or 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 or, or whatever you like really okay I'm going to have a section though. All right, so let's see. I haven't actually measured any of this bit yet because I'm having a bit of a, a pickle. So we want it to be, let's have a look. How wide does that need to be? So it needs to be three and a half. So we're going to go just under three and a half because if it's dead on three and a half it's not going to fit in the box so just under three and a half so again by sort of about a sixteenth like we did before three and a half and under by a sixteenth now this is how oops I'm not, hopefully oh that might not be big enough i might have to do this in two sections that's all right though doesn't matter still going to look just as nice so with my piece of three and a half inch or just under three and a half inch my envelopes measure 
four and a half so I'm actually going to go because obviously you need to get your fingers in there so I'm going to go to four and five eighths plus one and a quarter inches I just had to move it along there so I could see where it needed to go a uh, bit of a cheater right so we've done four and five eighths so that the envelope can fit in there then I've scored at five and seven eighths and then seven and one eighth and I'm going to do the same as I did before I'm going to fold it one way then I'm going to fold it the other way all right so that is what we're left with okay now that will then go on top of that one now can you see that's actually slightly too wide so I just need to trim that down a bit this is where you kind of need to gauge it as you're going along really because sometimes you do these boxes perfect fit sometimes you don't what you have to remember is we are not engineers well I say we're not engineers some of you might be engineers <laughs> I certainly am not an engineer as you probably just figured there we go right so that fits now for the wick but can you see here I'm not going to have enough there to put my other folding so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim that one down I'm going to trim that by an inch so I've just got a little bit that's enough to tuck under okay so what I've actually been left with you probably didn't get any of that if you were trying to follow my my line of thought there but what I have actually been left with is a piece of card that measures three and a quarter whoops by just over eight inches all right so that is going to be for my first little pocket if you like so that will be there with my cards in there okay and then this part here this is my other bit that I need to separate so now I know that that's three and a quarter obviously I know my next piece needs to be three and a quarter so um I wonder if oh no that's not wide enough so I just had that little bit hanging around I didn't know if it would work or not so let's just trim that down so I'm back to my three and a quarter but this time I'm going to do it very slightly different because my divider's in there which is great I want to make sure the whole of this area is covered but I need to make sure everything fits so if I just pop those in that gives me a better idea of how wide I need to go because obviously I don't want them squashed the cold can be squashed because it's cold the tags I don't want to squash up so I'm just going to be a little bit careful with them but if I measure that I'm going to be looking at a roundabout now it is a roundabout because it doesn't need to be precise but if I measure one of my tags I have it on an angle which is how they're going to be that would be what would you say about two and a half inches wouldn't it yeah should we go for about two and a half I'll put that back in there actually do you know what let's measure one of these nice big fatty ones that might give us a good a better idea ah look that's two and three quarters mind you it's not going to be that way is it it's going to be that way how big is it that way no, it's still two and three quarters right well that solved that problem then this box this space this area needs to be two and three quarters so if we grab our scoreboard again this is the card that I'm using I'm going to put my first score line at two and three quarters then I want one and a quarter inch height so I'm then going to score at four and then again at five and a quarter because that's now giving me my upsy downsy upsy downsy bit all right so again folding those round I will burnish it all in a minute just in case you're thinking why doesn't she burnish them what's the matter with the woman oops in a box again now 
obviously this time I need to make sure I'm fitting in my gap there. So I reckon if I put that there and I put that there, it's not very precise measuring, I know, <laughs> but it works for me. But if I put that there and that there, now, has anybody got another hand? Because I, I kind of need someone else <laughs> to come and hold this so I can put this in properly. This is the real technical way of making liners for your boxes. <laughs> How to be extra careful and really <laughs> do it brilliantly. <laughs> right, what should I go for? <laughs> I think I'm going to go for dun, 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 dun. what you probably can't see a flipping any of this, can you? One and a quarter. Right. Oh, like I said, it will all be on my blog. It will all make sense in the end. I promise. Right. What I want to do from that score line, I want to cut roughly one and a quarter there <laughs> that's what all that was about so will that fit in there no just marginally too long let's take off another eighth this stamping trimmer is just so good for doing things like this it really is all about the tools sometimes there you go look all right so that's now given us a really nice little finish which will fit in there just fine and I've ended up with a piece of card that measures three and a quarter by, whoops, that's just it's a tad too long, isn't it? Three and a quarter by six and an eighth. Was that right? Let me just double check that. Measure twice, cut once, my dad says. Six, yeah, six and a quarter. It's a bit of a wonky six and a quarter, mind. Let's make that nice straight. That's good. Right, now. Woo, bang, crash, wallop. You could, if you wanted to, just lay these in the box, I suppose. I'm actually going to glue mine in, though. Because I don't want them all falling out when somebody tries to pick the box up. So let's just make those, oh, I did that one didn't I, yeah I did that one, right I'm going to pop some glue inside the valley folds, which well they were mountain folds weren't they, <laughs> they're now valley folds because I've turned it upside down so just going to put some glue in there to stick the top of the divider like that. And that one. There we go. Don't make sure it will hold it nice and firm that way. And then I'm also going to stick them in the box as well. Because I think if I stick them in the box, again, it will stop them falling out, but it will also strengthen my box. Which is what I'm hoping for. There we go, a bit of a blobby bit there, but never mind. So let's just pop that in there, making it nice and straight and pretty. There we go, just stick those down. Now, these ones, which one was first? It was that one, wasn't it? That one went that way, and then, whoops, that one went that way. Was that right? Yeah, that's it. Right, so let's put this one in first. Let's double check that then. I wasn't entirely sure I've done that around the right way, but I did, so it's okay. So we put that one in, like that, and then This one, oops. So this is going to be going 
with the large bit towards the bottom there we go like that all right and can you see now we've covered the whole of the bottom so the pear pizzazz is all covered up at the bottom which gives that really nice finish so when we put all our bits and pieces in there we go let's pop oops they're all going to be going in there and our tags like that and then I'm going to have the cord in there as well that looks so nice doesn't it don't you think I'm really quite proud of that even if I do say so myself <laughs> right okay I'm just going to switch the camera for a minute while I just clear the decks and then we can sort the lid out and then we're going to be done all right back in a sec <laughs> 